Okay, so we are moving in now in this lecture here to um, rigid bodies, not just particles anymore. Um, so chapter 17 is all about some of the kinematics for um, rather straightforward motions of rigid bodies, but one more extension, one more complication than just our simple particles. Okay, so we got a few things to just talk about here in the title which is, uh, well, we can talk about each each thing and then planar will come later. So we, we'll talk about what it means to be a body, what it means to be a rigid body, what it means to be kinematics. Well, we already know that, but it's specific to uh, rigid bodies. And then uh, the planar will come in a bit. So let's start with just what it means, right, to be um, a body instead of just a particle. So we're talking objects here um, where we have a collection of particles. This is really the best way to think about it. We already know uh, we've been studying particles or just things that act like particles all along. And then the question here is, um, do we know the mass distribution? Is that important? Right? And you can start thinking along like, well, if there's a distribution of mass, you know, maybe mass is all <coughs> heavily weighted towards the bottom of the object. Does that, is that going to affect its kinematics, right? Um, okay, now rigid, the word rigid in here, means the things will be analyzed. So we're getting more towards like real objects, right? That's the idea. Uh, rigid is going to be the extent of our study here. Um, and what we mean by this, this is non-deformable. So through the processes, through um, uh, deformable. So as we go from one state to another, we're assuming that the actual object and the arrangement of those particles don't change. And that's a, that is an assumption, right? And then any r misarrangement of those particles is going to be reserved, you know, outside the scope of the class. Um, but you know, would also be a pretty um, significant energy change that uh, maybe we don't have the tools to even study here. Um, so what we're assuming here is that the distance. So like, we'll be more specific about rigid here. Distance between points that are on or inside of a, a body uh, remain constant. So that's a good way to describe what non-deformable means. Now, um, in in any curriculum of of you know uh, mechanical engineering, heck, even civil engineering, any 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 curriculum that includes an engineering mechanics series, you will take statics, right? Which is um, the uh, talking a lot about the forces for equilibrium. Um, we have dynamics here, which then combines kinematics with kinetics. And then, uh, but in oftentimes in this non-deformable way, then we have a class that is mechanics of materials, where we do consider the deformation under static loading, static loading only, right? So this is just perspective about like your curriculum, right? So we do in your curriculum, you will study what it means to deform, but only under static loading. So not in a dynamic situation where there's motion, where there could be acceleration, or where there's an unbalance of forces, and so. <coughs> um, the combination of all that, we have dynamic loading and there's deformation both with motion. That's reserved for graduate study. And so just to give perspective, when you combine all these things together, the, the analysis gets um, quite complicated. Okay. So then we have kinetic kinematics, I should say. And that's where we're, we're at right now. So as before, we're studying the motion here for, uh, well, quite a while, you know, a handful of lectures here. Um, we're studying the, the motion, specifically trying to describe motion, not the forces that cause it, that cause the motion. Okay, so that's as always, right? But specific to rigid bodies, right? What can a rigid body do? Well, in general, I mean, what can a real object do? It can be translated, so it can move around, translation, move around, right? And like move around in a in like a linear well a translational sense so to take an object and just there's a translation there's a translation I can go diagonal right that's translation and then we can also rotate an object right and so to go from here to here I've translated the center of mass here whoop that's where my finger is and I've rotated it and that that really describes all of the motions that a rigid body can have okay now this translation this movement this is, we have the tools to do this. This is just, if every particle remains constant within itself, then we can treat every single particle that makes up the collection of particles that we call a body and talk about its translation. What's going to be new here is this rotation. 
So we're going to focus a lot on this rotation, which is why it's so important that we had that uh, discussion at the end of the last chapter um, about angular momentum and uh, um, getting comfortable with more details of uh, uh, angular motions. So translation for a rigid body is a trivial extension of particle kinematics. And really the novel thing here, the new thing, this is going to be our focus. Is how do we have rotation um, as a part of describing the motion, the kinematics of rigid bodies. Okay? All right, so let's get into it then. Um, 17.2. We will just be, oh, and we, we still have the word planar to talk about, um, and that'll, that'll come here pretty quickly. Rotation about a fixed axis. Okay. So let's say we have a body, and it just could be arbitrarily shaped. This is one of my favorite things, or I just get to make up shapes, um, make up objects here. Okay, and then um, let's say it is rotating about some axis, and there's the axis as I've chosen to draw it. Um, and let's see, let's take, um, and so this is a rotation axis, and the body is rotating about that fixed axis. Right, and so since the, the name of the game here is rotation about a fixed axis, so what we mean is that's not changing. It's just continually rotating about that. Okay, and then let's put a few points here um, on the body, right? We can put one right on the axis or in the body, I guess, right? Um, one right there. And we'll put one off, off a little ways. This would be B. Okay, what is B going to do, right? B is just going to, hey, think about it, right? It's going to, as the body rotates, it'll kind of sweep out a circular path, right, um, circular path that goes around uh, the fixed axis, right, because if it's, if it's a certain distance away here, as the whole body in a rigid sense rotates, it'll always remain that distance away from the central axis, um, the fixed axis. So let's see, let's make some observations, right, A and B, they're on the same body. Okay, um, all points on the axis, like A here, remain stationary. Okay, so if there's any of the points, you know, A could we could have put anywhere, and it just doesn't have any motion due to this rotation only. Um, now, this is what's, this is the key here, is from A's perspective, right, what did it, if you're like an observer sitting down here at A looking up at B and you can see it, right? There's a heavy you know, red dot there. You would just see a, a particle sweeping out a circle, right? So from the perspective of A, it looks like B traces out a circle. So I always like to think like, Let's say you had like a long exposure camera and everything else was translucent, but B was this red dot, right? And you had this like really long exposure over many rotations of the, of the object here. What you would get on your camera as it sensed all of that, that red dot, that, that red light coming from the red dot would be a red circle, right? If you were A. And it is remaining in the plane. This is part maybe is not so obvious, right? This is, we're getting into the next level of thinking about the system. Remaining in a plane, uh, the plane that is normal to the axis of rotation. So I'm not sure how to, to draw this. In fact, I, when, I, when I drew my circle here, I'd really like it to be a little bit flatter because really what we're doing is we're cutting out a plane uh, that's normal to the axis, right? So uh, if we were to like draw like a line there, a few lines, right, that would be normal to the to the axis, right? <clears throat> but that's really hard to show without like a three-dimensional picture, right? Okay, so we're cutting out this circle from A's perspective in a plane that's normal. So that's where the word plane comes from, right? So we're backing up now into 17.1. I know it seems weird. Um, and that's because 
um, it, this all both of these ideas first get introduced in 17.1 and then we go into more detail in 17.2. I just thought it'd be go good to go into the more detail, but I don't know. These look little headers here. You don't need to have them, but if you're going to go um, refer and get more information from the book, these are the places I would go to do it, right? So 2D planar motion is the general form of this fixed axis rotation where points on a fixed plane remain in the plane. Okay? So just like B here stays in a plane that is uh, normal to the, the axis of rotation, um, the, when we have 2D planar motion, um, we, you know, this is the general form of points remaining in a plane as it moves. So let's do, let's, let's look at an example of just like pure planar motion. Um, and I think I'll start a new page. Okay. So let's say we have a plane. So this is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to collapse A and B so that they are on the same plane. So you think now like there's an axis of rotation somewhere. I'm trying to get, keep my pen. There's an axis of rotation somewhere right through this. And so the, this is the plane of motion for the rotation as, as long as we have the axis of rotation perpendicular to it, right? Or the, the plane is normal to the axis of rotation. Then this would be that plane of motion that we've then like cut out of this object. All right, and we'll put two points on here. So this isn't a perfect representation of this one. All right, we're going to go to a new example. But what we're going to do is we're going to put A and B on that same plane. All right. Okay, so let's do that. So we have, let's put A down here. And we'll put B up there. And, um, yeah, let's see here. Oh, and then and then we'll, we'll um, now, okay. Yeah, I haven't put the axis of rotation yet here, because what's 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 really cool here is once you've got a plane that's that is rotating about some axis, you can actually pick any point to act as the the, the center, you know, the axis of rotation here, All right? So once it's rotating, it's just it's just a perspective thing. Like where is the actual center of ac the center of rotation? Well, each point thinks it's the center, and it sees these circles being swept out around it. Okay. So um, the statements I'm going to make here, the following, the following holds for any two points, A and B, on the plane. Okay. Um, what I mean, right, so this is like where this choice of having, uh, let's actually draw it now. Um, this choice of having the rotation being about A, let's make A being the axis of rotation. Maybe it is in the global sense, um, but we can treat it no matter, we can treat it as anywhere, right? So fixed axis rotation about point A, and then because of that, B will trace out a circle from A's perspective. So B traces out a circle about A. And so when we say from A's perspective, what we mean is we're, we're shifting the axis of rotation, or we're shifting our, um, uh, you know, analysis point here to A. And then, so then everything rotates about A. And we could do the same thing for B, right? Okay, so now we have, um, we want to define angular velocity, which is this omega. To do that, we need to define an angle. Let's do it to B here angle theta from the horizontal. So what we have, if there's a horizontal, we're putting in here a Cartesian coordinate system. I, J, and then K comes right out at us. All right. And, um, okay, good. So our angular velocity then is uh, omega, and that's d theta dt, or theta dot, as we've had before. So uh, for the vector, right, that's just the scalar, the vector is going to be that value, that magnitude time in the k hat direction, right? And so the way I've drawn it here, omega is pointing out right at us out of the page, which is the positive k hat direction shown by this uh, dot with a circle. And then our uh, angular acceleration 
is alpha, which equals d omega dt, which is omega dot, or theta second derivative double dot. And um, so the vector version of this is that quantity in the k hat direction, right? So magnitude in the direction is out at us. Um, okay. Now, um, let's make another observation here, right? Um, and that is that once we've defined this, like this looks like what will theta, that's the angle from A to B, so this is specific to A. Well, we've kept this general here, right? So we can make this definition of putting any point as our center, you know, of, of the rotation here, and then any other point would have an angle associated with it. So every point on the plane uh, has the same omega and alpha, right? But what's going to be different are these linear quantities. Uh, the, yeah, but different linear velocity and acceleration. Okay, so our velocity vector and our acceleration vector, that's the thing that's going to depend on uh, what point we're analyzing. Now you can see there's nothing specific here to to what b is, just you know different thetas, um, but that's that's going to be the same. The rate of change of what theta is is going to be the same for the entire um, uh, rigid body here, this entire rigid plane. So um, this brings us to uh, well circular kinematics. Okay. Which, okay, so VB, the velocity at B and its vector, let's draw it, like, right? So we know that the um, direction or the, the coordinates, if we were to have the natural, uh, natural coordinates, so the normal and tangential, well, we know the velocity at B is that, because it's got to be, you know, if we have rotation. And so that really sets up what the... Uh, uh, unit vectors are here if we're going to do uh, natural coordinates. Uh, that is our tangential direction and this is our normal direction because this is the direction of the local direction of motion. Well, and this is only true for B, right? It's going to depend on where where we are. But this, and, and the whole idea is it's normal to that uh, line between, right? And that's really the position vector. Okay. So the velocity vector at B, that as we've drawn it, is is going to be purely tangential, right? Which we know to be r omega e t. Okay, and that r from you know this being our center of the coordinate system here is uh, right there, right? where the magnitude is is the distance between okay so the uh, tangential velocity right we've worked through this before is given by r omega for this perfect circular motion that we get from this pure rotation uh, and it's purely in the tangential direction and then uh, our acceleration vector does have two components a tangential component and a normal component which we've derived before is r alpha in the tangential and the normal is r omega squared. Now, um, these do depend on r. So these do depend on how far away the point is from the chosen axis of, of rotation. So these do depend on r, whereas these ones don't, right? Our angular acceleration and angular velocity. Okay, so that will be useful when we go into some problems. Um, but we do need to um, consider, well, so now we'd like to do um, something different here with this. Okay, this brings us into a look at what we call, well, relative motion, which we've done before for these just translational uh, velocities or linear velocities. Okay, so we'll do this separately for velocities and acceleration, and um, 
right now in, in this lecture here, we're just going to focus on the velocities. So what the relative motion is and the velocities. Okay, so um, what we're doing here is this now describes pure circular kinematics, right? And this describes, you know, this type of planar motion with a rotation on a rigid body. How do two particles, two points within that plane, relate in terms of their rotational motion only? What we, what we have with the relative motion, this now combines... Uh, translation and the rotation that we said make up this rigid body kinematics. So to combine translation and rotation, we need relationships here uh, between relative motions uh, of these points on the rigid body of points on a rigid body to the angular motion of the entire rigid body. Okay. So to combine the translation and rotation, which is what we're trying to do here with our kinematics of, uh, of uh, rigid bodies, we need to get a relationship that um, you know, compares the relative motions of the points on the rigid body to the angular motion of the entire body itself. So, here's our origin. Let's put our body somewhere up here. Now this is right, like a three-dimensional body because we have a three-dimensional coordinate system, right? Okay, just some random shape. Let's put our two points on it like before. Um, it could be anywhere. A and B, okay, uh, and then we have our position vectors from, now this is, this is the absolute position from the center, or from the origin of the coordinate system, okay, so there is our position to A, there's position to B, and, uh, and then we got a, th a third one, right? This one is a choice, kind of, which way we draw this, but this is the position of B with respect to A, as if A was the center of the coordinate system. Okay, so we have RB from A is the position of B relative to A, right? And so what we've had before, um, the RB, right, to go from the origin to B, we can go a different way. We can go through vector addition, RA, and then RBA. Oh, that's an equal sign. R A plus R B A. Okay. Well, and we've worked through this before, right? We've already come to these uh, relationships. We can then take the time derivative of this relationship, and we get that the velocity of B. Now, right, these are absolute velocities from the fixed coordinate system down here as the object is sort of moving. Uh, so to take the time derivative of this relationship, we get the velocity, the absolute velocity of B is the absolute velocity of A plus the velocity of B with respect to A, right? And um, so if this body is rotating about A, about that fixed axis that we've assumed to be A here, then um, we get this, the, we know that the um, relative motion is going to be perpendicular, so this here is the velocity of B with respect to A, but that doesn't mean that, and so that these, there's a 90 degree between, um, right, so if this is the axis of rotation, then it's always a tangential um, uh, angular velocity only, right, so, or I should say the angular component of the velocity vector only, so these would be a 90 degree angle here. Now, um, now, okay, and there's omega for our rotation, rather, right? So what we're doing here is, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a relative velocity for B, but its absolute velocity, you know, um, could also, is going to be governed by if A itself is moving in the, the fixed coordinate system, right? So if this is translating while rotating, well then the fixed axis rotation, that velocity is going to be, you know, uh, the translational velocity, we also get at B, but then that's going to be either, you know, added on or subtracted from this velocity. Okay, so oh, we can uh, go further than this, right? 
this relative velocity here, VB from A's perspective, the velocity of B from A's perspective, is the angular rotation crossed into that position vector. Again, because it's, we know it's perpendicular and that rotation is you know, out of the plane as we've drawn it, right? This is the velocity of B relative to A. Okay, now um, let's be careful. Okay, so the, the final result here, but I'm gonna make some, some more points on this, will, will be the velocity of B, that's the absolute velocity of B in the, co in the O's coordinate system, plus omega cross R B A. This is the one, the form that we want to use. Okay. So whether we're talking here, maybe we'll just take the final result. I'll keep this here. I just need more room. Um, this uh, we need this this term here is governed by the right hand rule, right? So let's take a bit of let's just be really careful with it right now, so we are all on the same page, right? And I think I've done this before and the assumption is we have experience with this, but right? This means that our fingers are uh, right of the right hand are along the k hat direction, okay, which is out of the page, out of the page, um, and that's just because that is the axis about which uh, we always, well, we typically assume that omega is rotating. We then wrap the fingers toward this relative position vector and then the thumb right of the right hand points along this relative velocity okay now one other statement to make here is right like i said before this could this works for any two points any two points a and b Um, uh, oh yeah, on on the same body. So this is this is valid for any two points on the same body. Sorry, I was I was com confusing this with the second note I'm going to make here, right? So what I mean is, this is a valid statement for any two points on the same body, and that's because the axis of rotation. can be any point. It's just that's going to affect um, from any point on the body all other points make a circle. Okay. Now that does mean that that would have to change so it's going to be uh, if we have a from the if there's a fixed axis on our uh, coordinate system, right? That's going to be a good choice for what VA is, uh, for for what point you, um, you 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 use as A here, which is like the the point in which doesn't have any uh, rotation, right? Okay, but this is a valid statement for any two points. Okay, so let's let's apply these principles here with a we can call it an example, but um, it's going to be one of these examples that don't have a uh, that doesn't have a um, numbers in it. So let's call it like system, the first system that we're analyzing. And I think we'll do this for two and then we'll get into more traditional like examples as we go on. Okay, so these are going to be, um, well, um, these are going to be a pair of gears with fixed centers. So those centers are fixed, you know, with the, the more global primary uh, coordinate system or reference frame. And uh, there is no slippage between the two gears. Okay, so let's draw this out. We have the first gear here. Let's go up three, 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 three. Okay, so there is the first gear, and then we'll go over two for this other one. Okay, this is gear A, this is gear B. And um, let's see, what do we want to do here with this? Let's express 
the rotation rates of B and, uh, sorry, the rotation rate, so the angular velocity of B and the angular acceleration of B in terms of the radius of A, the radius of B, so some geometrical properties of the gears, and let's say we're specifying the rotation, the angular velocity and angular acceleration of A. Okay, so let's draw these in here. Okay, so there is the radius of the A gear, B gear, obviously this is also a um, just a simple uh, picture, right? There would be like teeth here if we were really drawing this, All right? So maybe, low, well, I don't want to mess the picture because, we, well, let's do it out here, right? So really there would be like all the way around. And then as we got closer, we would see the gears here too, and they would interlock. Um, but I'm not going to do that because this, this is going to be an important point of our uh, drawing. Okay. Um, and so we're specifying an omega a, we're specifying a alpha, an acceleration here, and those are in the positive direction, right? And that's because we have our i hat this way, our j hat that way, and then k hat is going to be right out at us. And these are the positive directions for alpha and omega in the, in the positive k hat direction from the right-hand rule. Okay, so let's see i think that's the picture um we want to know what this what these are for uh down here so again i will well we would have oh let's do it right this is now the angular velocity in the assumed positive direction and the angular acceleration in the assumed positive direction now whether those are drawn in the correct direction let's see right and then maybe we can talk about what how these gears act Okay, so let's analyze with our relationship here for relative motions and with the velocities here, uh, gear A. And uh, we'll do this from an, a, a smart choice of a point, which is going to be right there. And the reason we're doing right there is because at that point, if there's no slip between the gears, that's the one point where the two gears act the exact same. So if there's a velocity here, which we will expect you know, if that's the direction of motion for omega a, this is going to be the motion of that point. The velocity must be tangential to the position vector, right, which is right there. That is the position vector to get to p from a, right, and we know that the velocity must be perpendicular to that for circular motion of a, and this is just a alone, right? Um, but it's also going to be true if we come at it from this side. This is the position vector of P from B's perspective. And this velocity is going to be the same for both gears. For both gears. All right. So that's why um, we will look at the velocity of P from A's perspective. And we, and then this is the the velocity of p with respect to a. Now, um, uh, and the, so this is <laughs> this is we we wrote this as velocity of p. Well, that's the absolute velocity of p. It's also the velocity of p with respect to a, and that's because a and b are both fixed, right? They're uh, fixed to the um, whatever the rigid the rigid reference frame. Um, so. Okay, now this then, because it's fixed, this is zero. Okay, and uh, we get that the velocity of P is um, the rotation rate of A in the k-hat direction crossed into uh, the radius of A in the i-hat direction. And that's because to go from A to B, A to P, we go one radius A away, right, in the i-hat direction. Now, let's check, you know, k hat, it would be out of the page. Uh, I'm doing a k hat cross i. k hat cross i is in the positive j direction. Okay, so confirm that. And we get that the velocity of p is then r a omega a in the j hat direction, which matches our, our, uh, our um, visual assumption here, right? Our intuition about what p would be. It should be in the positive j hat direction.
Okay, let's do the, now the same thing for gear B, which is uh, VB plus omega crossed into, now let's put, we can be more careful here, put A on that one and B on this one. Uh, omega B crossed into RP from B's perspective. Uh, again, um, this one is zero because those points are fixed in the, in the reference frame. Um, VP is then omega B K hat crossed into, now here's the big change here. This is minus RB I hat. And that's because to go from B to P, we have to go in the minus I hat direction. And so when we do K cross I hat, K hat cross I hat, that is still J hat, but we now it's negative. So VP is then minus RB omega B J hat. And so now you might be wondering, wait a minute, how is one of these velocities positive and the other one negative? Right? I thought we agreed that if omega is positive, then V is pointing upward, which is a positive J hat. So that looked right, but now we got one negative. Well, that's because omega b can take on a negative value, All right? And that's, that tells us that L, the assumed direction of rotation, which is it's fine, it's, we did the right thing. You put it in the positive coordinate direction, and then you get a negative result showing that the actual direction is backward if omega a, All right? One of these has to be negative. One of these omega is, omegas is negative, All right? Okay, so the way mathematically we show this, right? We say vp is the same for both gears. This is the no slip. And so that means that R omega R A omega A must equal minus R B omega B. And we find that the omega B must have this negative relationship with omega A. Right? And uh, what we found is that these gears rotate in a counter counter they, they they're counter rotating gears right counter rotating gears right so one if one if the first one does go this way then the other one must be rotating the other way right and this both goes for omega and well let's let's work through alpha so omega a omega b all right how does alpha work well all you have to do to find the relationship for alpha is uh maybe here take a time derivative of each side uh, or, or whatever even this final result right just take time derivatives there time derivative and the radiuses don't change in time right so the only thing we do is well the time derivative uh, d omega dt is alpha b and that must equal minus R A over R B alpha A as we get the time derivative of omega A on the other side. Okay. Uh, and so we could have the same thing over here, which is, well, if there's an angular, maybe the angular acceleration, you know, it could be rotating this way, but it's slowing down. So it's actually a deceleration. Then the deceleration must be in the other way. So this is alpha A, and then alpha B must be opposing it, right? Uh, one other note. Before we move on, is that this factor of R A over R B, this is called the gear ratio, and it really uh, is a factor of the increase or decrease of this angular motion, right? Um, so you can design, you know, gearing systems to uh, to be able to put in a, a small angular uh, rotation, and we get a big one out if we um, you know, uh, decrease those, um, de through a decrease like this, right, we can go from a big, well, so let's check it, right, so if we go from a rather slow omega, and then we go from a big radius to a small radius, this is a big factor, right, let's say RB is really small, right, then this we're going to be scaling up our small rotation rate to a big rotation rate like we have here, or you go in the opposite, right, you know, Turn, turn it from this way, start from a slow radius, go to a bigger radius, you can then uh, slow down that rotation rate. So it's really a factor of increase or decrease in angular velocity. Okay, um, 
Well, let's do another system now. All right, so now we're going to look at um, a system two. Okay, which is going to be a rolling wheel that's not slipping, with no slip. Let's do the kind of the same, similar thing here. What we want to do is find expressions uh, for a few velocities, okay? So, and I'm going to label a diagram here. Velocity at B and a velocity at A. And this is all relative to the ground that it's rolling on. Okay, so let's put some perspective here, okay? Uh, can we fit it in here? I think that should work. Okay. Um, let's put the ground. And let's see here. This thing is now rolling. So let's have it rolling in the positive whoosh, out at us, right? Out at me. Um, positive direction. Oh, that's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right-hand rules are going to be tough here. Um, you see my left hand. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting confused with, with the directionality of the video because it flips it. I don't know if you know this. I'm writing on a board and there's a camera pointing at me and then it flips it in the post-processing. So um, I'm going to avoid... Oh, you should be able to see what I see. Okay, so this should work just fine, right? Uh, as long as you are looking at me doing the exact same thing with your right hand, um, I think this should work. Uh, yeah, right? So when you look at me, do it with your right hand, you'll see me doing it with my left hand, but no, I'm telling you what to do with your right hand, right? Which would be just copying me as if in a mirror, right? So this direction should come out at, 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 at you, right? Okay. <laughs> I think you see it the exact same way I do. Okay, I don't know why I'm hesitating so much. Okay, it's hard to imagine. All right, let's see. Um, let's put some important points on here. Um, so A is going to be right in the center. We want to know what that velocity is relative to the ground. C is going to be down here, and that's just going to be a point of reference for us. B is over here on the side. And, uh, yep, yeah, uh, some geometry is needed here. Um, so let's label the radius here as constant R for the wheel. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be drawing some more things as we, as we go along here. Okay, so let's start the analysis, okay? Um, and we'll, we'll mark this up. Okay. So first thing we want to know, um, these two things. Well, let's, let's start here with what the velocity of point A is, which is the center of the wheel. Um, and let's do this by using this reference point, so from C. And that's because we, there's something special about C, right? Well, our, our relative, uh, or our, um, our equation here is the velocity at A, the relationship between A and C, so we have the velocity vector at A. Now this is relative to the ground, the fixed coordinate system, um, or the, the coordinate system. Actually, let's put our coordinates on here. Okay, we have Cartesian. Okay, and um, so then we have the velocity at C, and then we have the rotation of the wheel crossed into the position vector of A as seen from C. Okay, so we need to then put that in here. And we'll represent these things all in a Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so this right here is R, the position vector of A as seen from C. All right, so if we start from C as the center point on this rotating rigid body here, um, that's how we get up to, to A. Okay, so um, and then the key, uh, why this is such a convenient choice, is at this instant, right, this is no slip, right? No slip means that 
whatever is touching the ground is not going to be sliding around. And if the ground is fixed, or as long as we're talking about relative to the ground, then the velocity of c absolute to the ground has to be zero. Okay? That's the key, right? That's why it's such a nice point to do analysis with, right? So that, we just say, is zero. It has no contribution. All right? Well, our omega, our, our, our uh, angular velocity is whatever the angular velocity magnitude is times the k-hat direction. Now, that's coming out right at us. Right? Represent that in our coordinates with a k-hat. I'm pretty sure you see exactly what I see, right? Okay. I mean, you have to then, I would have to do it with my left hand to, to get you to see it, and then that would go out towards you, and then that looks like that's my right hand. That's actually my left hand, right? Isn't that crazy? Okay. <coughs> um, crossed into the... Uh, R, J, I'm not sure if I have that right, right? Which if I, if I should be using my right or left. Uh, you should see exactly what, you, what, what I see. Um, and so if you use your right hand, right, this should then, your thumb should then point out at you, and then this, you know, is the k-hat direction. This is just the assumed direction, right? It could be rolling in the other direction, then everything just turns out to be negative, right? Okay, so with this, right, k crossed into j is, 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 an, is a negative one, right? Check right here. K, start your fingers out that way, cross it into J, that'll be the negative I hat direction. All right, so our VA is minus R omega I hat. Now let's check this. Let's say that omega is drawn in the right direction. It is rolling this way, right? Then the center of mass marches this way, which is in the negative I hat direction. All right, makes sense, yeah? And the, the rate at which it moves is going to be a radius times an omega away. Well, think about that, right? R omega is the speed that C moves with respect to A. In fact, it's, it's the speed that anything that's R, capital R, away from A, with the motion of omega, that's how fast its, 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 its tangential velocity is, right, at any R radius. So any of these outer points are moving at that speed. Well, if that's the speed of C with respect to A, that's also the, that's also the speed of A with, uh, that's also the speed of uh, vice versa, right? So if that's the speed of C with respect to A, that's also the speed of A with respect to C. So this makes sense, and it's in that negative I hat direction, just continually moving that way. Okay, now let's, uh, let's do the same thing but with B. So VB is going to be VC. That's still relative to the ground, so just because we're analyzing B here doesn't change anything. That's still zero, plus omega cross the only change here is now this is B's position with respect to C, or as, as seen from, from point C. So that's going to be this vector. This is now R, B from C. And, uh, well, that um, is, looks like this, R, B from C. Well, this is a radius of the circle, and that's a radius of the circle. Right? So we know that the, the, the component this way is r i hat, right? This is c, and this is b. And we also know that that length there is r, and that's r j hat, yeah? So then we can plug this into, uh, plug everything else, plug everything in, which is omega k hat crossed into r i hat plus r j hat. Now k crossed into i hat is in the positive j direction. So we have, and then the r is constant in both of them. So we can pull out an r omega, and then we have a k crossed into i hat plus a k crossed into j hat. Order matters here, so don't mix these up, right? Put your fingers in the k direction, uh, which to you would be out that way. Um, and then cr uh, wrap your fingers towards I, and it should point directly upward in J. So this is R omega J hat. And then put your fingers up in K, your right hand fingers up in K. Uh, curl it towards the J direction. That should be in the minus I direction. Okay. And so VB is equal to minus r omega i hat plus r omega j hat. So let's try to put that 
on on here on the actual picture. So we've determined a few things, right? So VA is, is zero, or VC is zero. VA now we know goes exactly this way. We just put directions on here. And VB now moves that way, right? It's moving backward in I, but with the same amount moving upward. Okay, this is VB. And does that make sense, right? Well, that makes sense as the ball rolls, right, B is going to be moving to the left with the whole wheel, but also moving up as, as kind of the next portion, you know, this portion kind of, uh, this portion here makes its way to the hitting the ground and all of these portions uh, start uh, moving up. So the actual motion instantaneously here at B is to be moving up in a 45 degree angle. We can check this, we can check this result, I mean we're done here, we could have easily use in, used, used, um, point, uh, let's, here, here, let's check the velocity at B with analysis from point A. Okay, so the same thing, VB equals VA, but now what's different is we can't cancel this out. This isn't zero, but luckily we have a relation there, right? Plus omega crossed into the R of B's position, the position vector of B with respect to A. Okay, so that is this one from A, where do you have to go to get to B? So this is R B from A. Okay, and that's 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 easy, right? That's just R I hat. Okay, so we plug these in. We've got uh, uh, minus R omega I hat. That's that. That's V A. That's V A's absolute motion with respect to the ground, plus omega k hat crossed into r i hat and so therefore vb is minus r omega i hat and then a k crossed into i k crossed into i is in the positive j direction r omega j hat check that is confirmed okay Cool. All right. So um, examples that follow now are more the other systems we'll be analyzing have more quantitative, uh, more quantities, you know, values involved here, uh, more traditional homework. But this is a, a general look at um, a rolling wheel um, as long as it's not slipping here.